life. It's mine! So you have Catherine Heigl and Rosario Dawson going at it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So Unforgivable is directed by Denise DeNovi. This is her directorial debut, and she's mostly known for a lot of the film that she's produced in the past. So what the movie is about is David and Tessa are married. They're happily married, or it seems to be like they're happily married. But then right at the beginning of the movie, you find out that they're divorced, that they're separated. They're not getting along anymore. Something drew a rift between their relationship, and David has moved on to his newfound love, Julia, played by Rosario Dawson. Now, I remember back in December of last year when the trailer first dropped for this movie, I was intrigued slightly because of the characters, but when it started getting into the catfight, it looked like some cheap soap opera drama that I would laugh at. So when I was going into this movie, I kept my expectations low. But then I love the way it started. It gave you a scene from the very middle of the film and you're kind of asking yourself, like, okay, man, how did they get to these events? What led up to here? And then the film jumps back six months earlier to let you know exactly what's going on. Now we've all seen movies like this before, but Unforgettable, it gives you a little twist that you may not have seen. What I did like about it was the first and second act, you don't know why Tessa and David split. You know that he left her and that she's still in love, but you just don't know what happened. You just don't know why they split up. And the film takes a very long time before it reveals that information. And that's a great decision that the director made because it just gets you intrigued and more interested in like what's really going on behind the scenes. And from the first moment when you see Catherine Heigl's character, Tessa, the first thing that comes to your mind is like Snow Ice Queen. I mean, she's like a perfect wannabe Barbie that it has to have every hair straight. And I kind of understand that you're a woman. You don't want to go leave the house with your hair looking nappy and whatnot. You want to be well and put together and be presentable. But she takes it to a whole nother level that can drive someone crazy. And she's kind of doing that with her daughter. And later on, you kind of see that that's how her mother molded her. And it just kind of shows you where her character came from. Rosario Dawson's character, Julie, is just beautiful. She's sweet. She's innocent. She just seems like the perfect little butterfly that just floats around and doesn't want to bother anybody. But you find out soon enough that she has her own dark past as well. Now, this movie does take its time to get good, but that's OK, because for the whole movie, you get little appetizers here and there that keeps you interested. You're always wanting to know why David and Tessa split. You wanted to know more about Julia's background. You just want to know how it will end. Though as the film carries on, you get to see more and more of Texas character. And you just start to say to yourself, okay, this woman is really crazy. Did something happen to her when she was a child? Some episode that we don't know yet. She just does these little, little things that just, you know, like nails on a chalkboard and gets under your skin, making it crawl. And you just want to get to the bottom of it immediately. It's a simple movie. It's a simple premise. It's not too much that you won't understand. There are a few little nitpicks in here and there that I wish her character would have dropped a certain line of dialogue to flesh out the scene, to explain it more. As far as the ending is concerned, when the two women are fighting that you see so prominently in the trailers, it's a good fight and it seems very realistic and I enjoyed it. And I was just kind of saying to myself, okay, this is the ex-wife versus the new wife. Do you really want to kill the ex-wife? Does the ex-wife really want to kill the new wife? Well, you can bet your bottom dollar that the ex-wife wouldn't mind killing the new wife. But I was sitting to myself saying, okay, how is this going to end? How are they going to resolve this situation? And I really liked the way they tackled it. It was a clever way to where everybody wins in a sort of way and there can still be peace in the future. And what I also like is when the film is over with or when you think it's about to end, there's still a slight little twist that kind of can keep the film going and just that extra cliffhanger that gets you excited as you're walking out of the theater when the credits hit. Look, I'm not going to say this movie is amazing, but going in with low expectations, I really did enjoy it. If I had to rate Unforgettable out of a 1 out of 10, I would easily give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, a 7 out of 10. So, have you seen Unforgivable? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. 
And if you don't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide. You can also bookmark my website and look me up on social media. So guys, thank you again for tuning in for my review slash opinion for Unforgettable. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.